Good morning. Uh, welcome to uh, worship today. It's great to see everyone. Also want to extend a warm welcome to everyone joining us online, whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook. Uh, we're glad to have you here. Make sure to give a like to the feed and just share in the comments to let us know that you're with us here today. Uh, a little bit change of uh, plan today. Uh, Tony Piercelli was going to be leading our music here this morning, but Tony's had a, a bad case of shingles the last few weeks. So um, please pray for uh, Tony uh, for uh, that, uh, that healing. He's uh, home healing up uh, this morning, and so we just want to pray that, uh, that God would uh, be with him uh, through this time. So we're doing some new songs. We, we changed all the songs that we're going to be singing this morning, so we're going to uh, and rehearse them real quick. Uh, but we're going to need you to help us uh, sing out nice and loud here this morning. With that said, uh, Jan has a, an invitation that she'd like to give to everybody. Folks, we had such an awesome turnout for the Christmas choir, and we are in need of singers. So if you would be even interested in coming and singing or playing or anything, can you just come and find me or Dan? We always rehearse, we try to always rehearse on Thursday nights from 7 until 8 o'clock here at church. That way we get the words right, we get the screens, we get the mics, we get the sound, we're all comfortable with the songs. Then on Sundays we practice at 8.15, we do a nice little rehearsal so that we're ready and sound and really good for you guys. So please come find me. We would love to have you come and visit and, and join us. Great. And uh, beyond just singing, there's other opportunities uh, available. Uh, we're always looking for help uh, running the sound, uh, running the live stream, and also uh, running the, the screens on, on Sunday morning. Love to have you be a part of the team. As we uh, begin our, our worship this morning, let's stand and sing.
are beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, let us confess our sins before God. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and it is for his sake that he forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God unto you, the forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. The moment that I wake up, till I lay my head, I will see the goodness of the Apostles' Creed to confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we hear now a reading from God's Word. Good morning. The reading this morning is from John 1, 43 through 51, when Jesus calls Philip and Nathaniel. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, how can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said to him, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus answered him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many in this world believe the future is trending downward. We're in this downward spiral economically, socially, politically, distressed and concerned for the state of our nation, the state of our world and even the individual lives of our, our families, our church, and us personally. Some will say that it's so bad and it's getting so bad that, well, Jesus must be returning real soon. All that's going on, all that is, is happening. There's two major wars in the world, one in Israel one in Ukraine. This year is an election year. As contentious and as ugly as the past few elections have been, it's probably going to be even more contentious and more ugly this year. There are some people who yearn for the good old days. They want to go back, maybe to a time that was better, a time that was simpler, a time that was maybe less hurried. There's the slogan again, make America great again, an idea of the good old days, going back to the way it was it implies that there was this, this ideal time and that somewhere along the way that we lost it and the ideal future would be to go back to that time 
and the way that it used to be, the way that it was. The word for it is nostalgia. And in our minds, this idea of nostalgia, it becomes romanticized. And we have a way of remembering the past, remembering the good old days. We remember the good of the good old days, but we, our minds have a way of filtering out that every, everything wasn't so good. Everything wasn't so great as, as we might have remembered. Uh, certainly, yeah, there are some things about the good old days, the days past that were better than today. But if we're honest and we step back for a moment and we look at it from God's perspective, there are many things today that we have and experience, and opportunities that we couldn't have even imagined back then. Uh, just think of ways that our lives are better today. Uh, take one, technology. You know, we have information and knowledge. You have a question, you need to figure something out, it's right here at your, at your fingertips. Yeah, there's there's some challenges associated with the technology, but there's a lot of good that comes from the technology. Think about communication. You know, you had a, a loved one that, that moved away. How'd you have to stay in touch? That, that long-distance phone bill? Writing letters? And now we can instant message them in many different ways and pick up the phone. Travel. We complain today about flight delays. But it's an amazing thing that you can travel around the world and you can be on the other side of the world in a day, in, in, in a matter of hours, where at one point in time, most people never really left the region in which they were born. Uh, think about the tools that we have to deepen our faith. You know, there's scripture but we have the abundance of Scripture. Go back to the time of Martin Luther, and the people didn't even have the Bible in their own native language. And today we have the Bible in multiple languages, in multiple formats. You can read it on a, on a screen. You can read it in a, a, a book. We've got movies. The Chosen is a, a series we can watch on the life of, of, of Jesus. There's resources online. You can take online Bible studies podcasts, resources to deepen our faith like, like never before. We are blessed to live in the times that we live. Kings and emperors and pharaohs of ages past could only dream about some of the luxuries that ordinary common people like you and me experience every single day. A refrigerator in our home, electricity, air conditioning, heat. Wow. We are also at the most prosperous time the world has ever known. Did you know this? Over the last generation, extreme poverty has been on the decline. There, there, are, there is one-third fewer people in extreme poverty today than just 20 years ago. At one point in time, there were over 2 billion people living in extreme poverty, and now it's 700 million people living in extreme poverty. Yes, that's not good, but it's better. It's better than it has ever been when it comes to the percentages. The world is filled with opportunities, opportunities like, like never before. Yes, whole, the whole creation is groaning for salvation. That's what the scriptures say. The whole creation is groaning for salvation. But we need to know this. Jesus says in the scripture reading that you will experience greater things. And we need to know that the best, the best is yet to come. Yes, creation is groaning for salvation, but we are looking forward, not backwards, to what was, but we're looking forward to what will be the salvation that Jesus brings to this world when he returns. God is at work. 
God is at work in this world. God is work in our lives. And that's why Paul says this in the book of Philippians. He says, not that I have already attained this or I am already perfect. Yeah, there are issues. There are challenges before us. We live every day in the consequences of our sins in the past. But he says, I press on, I press forward to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, nostalgia, romanticizing the past, the good old days. No, he says, I strain forward to what lies ahead. I press on forward towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. My challenge for you here today is to believe God for better things. To believe God for greater things. To believe God for new things, that he is working new things in your life, through ever, whatever your situation is. We can't always see it. We don't always understand the way that God is working. Life is sometimes filled with disappointment, yes? But what we think of as a disappointment just may be God's way of getting your attention. What may be your greatest disappointment is God placing the greatest opportunity you have ever seen in your life. The story today, Jesus, he goes to Galilee. And he finds Philip, who would be a disciple of Jesus. And what does he say? He says, follow, follow me. That's the calling that God gives to each and every one of us to follow Jesus, to do the things that Jesus did, to be like Jesus and experience his kingdom. It goes on to say, then Philip, he, 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 he receives that invitation and he goes and finds Nathaniel. And he's all excited. Have you, have you ever been excited about someone, about, about something, and, and you went to share it? <laughs> And you share this good news, you're, you're, you're filled with joy, you're filled with anticipation, and the other person responds, whatever. They don't share your excitement, they don't share your enthusiasm. It's sort of like me when I talk about drones. I love my drones, you've seen my pictures flying around, Dan, Dan shares my enthusiasm, but I'll start talking about it with other people and they just got this blank stare on their face. Or maybe maybe you, you, you like sports and you talk, start talking about sports because someone doesn't like sports. And again, you get that kind of that blank stare uh, in, the, in the face. Whatever it might be, you share enthusiasm, excitement for something, and someone doesn't share that same enthusiasm and excitement. That's kind of what Philip experiences here. He says, we found him, we found the Messiah, the one whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of, of Joseph. And... Nathaniel, he responds and says, Nazareth, really? Can, can anything good come from Nazareth? You know, you would expect that the Messiah, the king to come, he would have been born in Bethlehem. We know the story, right? Nathaniel didn't know the whole story. Bethlehem was the city that David was from. And the Messiah, the king to come, would, would be a descendant of, of David. And if not, Bethlehem certainly would have been born in, in the capital city, the center of their, their religion, would be born in Jerusalem. But Nazareth? Are you kidding me? Nathaniel's filled with disappointment. It is not at all what he had expected or wanted or desired. There was disappointment. But Philip... He doesn't give up because he has this enthusiasm. He's already seen Jesus. He knows who Jesus is. And so he says, come. Give him a chance. Come and see and experience for yourself. I, can't, I, I can tell you all about him, 
And that's the thing for us. We can tell other people all about Jesus, but it's for each and every person to experience Jesus for themselves. And we point people to Jesus. We lead them to Jesus. But ultimately, it is the Spirit working in their lives and on their heart that will ultimately make the real difference. So Nathaniel's like, all right, I'll go. If you insist, I will, I will go check him out. We'll give it a try, see, see what happens here. So Jesus says he saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. So what Jesus is saying here is Nathanael tells it like it is. We might describe Nathanael as a pessimist. He is a doubter. He says, I have to see it to believe it. And even if I see it, maybe it's all an illusion and you're just, you're just blowing smoke. So Jesus, he recognized this about Nathaniel. He says, this is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. This is one who calls it out the way that he sees it. Nathaniel is shocked. How, how did you know this about me, Jesus? Jesus answered, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Little did Nathaniel know that he was indeed talking to God himself, the king of the universe. And it says in Psalm 139 that, that even before you were knit together in your mother's womb, that God saw you, God knew you, and that you were precious in his sight. Nathaniel was just blown away that, that Jesus would know this about him. Uh, little did he know who he's talking to. So many of our, our disappointments in life is because we're looking at the situation from our perspective. And what we don't see is we don't see it from God's perspective. There's a saying that you don't even know what you don't know, right? We call that ignorance. In our pride, we like to think that we know, but the truth of the matter is we don't often know the beginning of anything. We are more ignorant than we ever, ever realize. And that God is working behind the scenes. And God is working in invisible ways that, that we can't even begin to grasp or imagine. And the point is for you and me to hold faith in our hearts, to believe that whatever we are going through, whatever we are experiencing, no matter how great the disappointment that God is working, God is working through that. So Nathaniel responds, he says, you are. You are indeed the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And I love this, what Jesus says. Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Just this little, little thing. Because I saw you under the fig tree, you believed. And you need to know this, that you will see even greater things than these. Keep in mind what Nathaniel would experience. Almost immediately following this story, we come to John chapter 2. And Jesus changes water into wine. He would heal the sick. He would make the lame to walk. He would give sight to the blind. He would make the deaf to hear. He would cast out the demons. He would feed the 5,000. Indeed, greater things would Nathaniel see. And of course, there is the ultimate, the ultimate miracle of them all. And the miracle is that Jesus would die on a cross. God himself, king of the universe for your sins and for mine. It's a miracle. It's amazing that God would do that for us because he loves us so much. But that's not the end of the story, is it? The story continues three days later. Jesus is risen, resurrected, alive. And because he lives, that we too may live a new life. The greater things here isn't so much about the miracles themselves. The ability to change water to wine and make, you know, feed 5,000 people with just five loaves and two fish to heal the sick. No, it's not so much about that, but it's about lives changed. And it's about a bigger eternity because of what of Jesus coming. 
his life, his death, his resurrection. Because of the Holy Spirit working through the apostles and working through you and me, we look forward and we anticipate a day where we are joined with all the saints and all the angels in the glory of God's, God's heaven. Greater things for those of us who are believers. We're not looking to go back to the past, the good old days. But we know the best is yet to come. And we live with a future orientation. And the thing is, is that today we walk in faith, living as if what is not yet is, because we hold the certainty in our hearts that it will be. Greater things, first of all, involves repentance. Repentance is about change. You've heard the cliche, right, and I've shared this before, that doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is, is insanity. It's the definition of insanity. Repentance is about doing different. Instead of walking in our way, we, we take our lives and we center it on Christ and, and follow his lead where he would have us go. So often the places where we are stumbling in our lives is because we're not seeking first the kingdom in that area of our lives. Maybe you're struggling financially. Ask the question, am I seeking first the kingdom of God and the way that I manage my money? Your health. You're struggling with health. Maybe your health complications. There's, again, because you're not caring for the temple of God, this, your body, in the way that God has called you to be a good steward of that. Relationally. Maybe you are, are struggling in, in relationship with, with another person. And again, maybe you are approaching that, not, that relationship not from a godly perspective, but from your own perspective and doing what you think is best rather than what God thinks best. So repentance, first of all, involves confession. Say, I've sinned. I've sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. I've not lived as you would have me live. And now I am going to commit myself to doing Jesus as you have called me to do. And I'm going to make every effort. Yes, we may still stumble. We may still fall. But we're going to ask the help of the Holy Spirit to walk as he has called us to walk. Greater things also involves belief. It involves faith. To know that that what is not yet will be. The good news of Jesus, sometimes for people, it, it is such good news that they cannot believe it. You know, grace is something that is foreign in our world. What is the saying? Nothing in life is free except the grace of God. And we, but we can't wrap our mind around it because nothing in this world is free. And so we, we think to ourselves that, well, there must be a price. There must be a cost to it. Believers, pure and simple, will do the works. We have the exact phrase, whoever believes in me. Whoever believes in me, Jesus says, will never thirst. Whoever believes in me, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Whoever believes in me will not remain in the darkness. Belief, it opens the door for God's working in our lives. It is the way in which we receive what he is doing. Greater things also comes about by burying your expectations. All of us, have certain expectations when it comes to our lives. When we were young, we had expectations about how our life would go, how our life would be. And I can say this with certainty, that for every one of us sitting here, we have places and areas in our lives where not everything went as Maybe you had in your mind a, a certain career, a certain amount of, of money that you would make, but you find yourself working in a way that, well, it's not as fulfilling as you thought it would be. Maybe you're not making as much money as you thought you might be making. 
We have certain expectations when it comes to things like who we would marry and our family and the way that our children would turn out. But again, maybe things didn't quite go as expected. And we can say that we're, we hold in our hearts, we hold what would be disappointment because we so much wanted it to be this way, but it turned out to be that way. The greater things that God wants to do in your lives, it starts with burying our expectations and looking to what he is doing and the way that he is working. God has a good plan in mind. It says, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, God has plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and plans to give you a future. But you need to know this, that God's plan is not your plan. God's plan is not my plan. As much as I want God's plan to be my plan, it's his plan. Sometimes we, 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 we have our, our mindset and we hit, this is what I'm going to do, this is where I'm going to go, and we pray and ask God, come alongside me now. Join me and, and help me do what I want to do. But the calling of God on our lives ha- it reverses all of that. It's not a matter of me figuring out what I want to do, but it's looking to what God is doing, where God is going, what God is prospering. Ask, look around, ask yourself, what is God prospering around me? Where do you see God at, at work in, in your lives and in the lives of others? And then consider how you might come alongside and join God in his mission, in what he is doing, in the ways that he is working in this world. And maybe this is the hardest thing of all here. Sometimes it's finding purpose in your pain. That, 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 that disappointment in your life. Maybe God knew that you needed to experience that disappointment so that you could appreciate all the more what he has blessed you with and given to you on the other side. It just might be that that the reason that, that you're experiencing that pain and that you've gone through what you've gone through, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that God comforts us in our sorrows so that we can comfort others with the help that we have received from God. It just might be that, that you've experienced this pain so that you can now help others who are going through that same pain that you've received healing from. And maybe, maybe you're still going through that pain. You're still going through that disappointment. And and it may be something that you're going through your entire life. But it goes back to that faith and that belief that God has a plan here, that God knows what he is doing, that God is a good God, and that God is, is our Heavenly Father. And He knows better than we know what is best for us. I may not always understand. I may not always agree. But in my heart and in my faith, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I let go of my expectations. I follow Jesus wherever it is he may lead. There's all kinds of things going on around us. As I said, wars in the world, violence, strife, family conflict. We talk about peace. One of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. We call it the peace that surpasses all understanding because it doesn't really make sense. When all that is, is going on in this world, we should have anxiety in our hearts and be worried all the time. But it is that faith, it is that trust in God working in our lives that throughout all that is happening, the turmoil of this world, we can be settled and have the peace that only God can give. And when others see that, that in the midst of all that is happening, how can you how can you have such calmness? How can you have such stillness in the midst of such turmoil? You can point them to Jesus. 
you can point them to the Messiah. You can point them to the one who says even greater things than this you'll see. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your working in our lives. Thank you, Lord, through transitions and disappointments and frustrations, uh, seemingly dead ends, to know, Lord, that you've got it all worked out. Help us, Lord, to experience the greater things that you've called us to, to live for Jesus each and every day. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. By the time we bring the prayers of the people, and we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Uh, just again, we want to lift up Tony in our, our prayers, pray that uh, uh, healing from uh, his uh, shingles. Uh, also, um, Ron had shared with me earlier uh, this morning, uh, many of you remember uh, Shirley, who uh, used to come with uh, Ron here to, to Good Shepherd before she moved with her family down to, uh, to Georgia. Uh, Ron shared with me earlier this week that uh, Shirley had, uh, has gone to be with the Lord and uh, had uh, funeral services. It was yesterday, I think it was. And so we just want to pray comfort for uh, Ron and for uh, you know, all of Shirley's, uh, Shirley's family. So let us uh, stand as we pray. O oh Lord, you put new songs in our mouths. Lead us out of all deceit and into confidence of your truth. Let us proclaim your wondrous deeds of faithfulness and salvation in Christ without fear or hesitancy as we experience the greater things, Lord, that you have called us to. Lord, in your mercy. As you once called Nathaniel into your service, be pleased now, uh, Lord, to send workers into your vineyard. We know the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Give us, Lord, all of us a delight in your holy scriptures that our witness would lead many to follow Jesus, the Son of God. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you call fathers, mothers, and children to serve in their households. Let them serve eagerly, each according to their station, trusting that such love honors you. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, let all the nations and peoples of the earth ascribe to you the glory due your name. Hear our prayers for all rulers and leaders. We pray especially for those who are in places in conflict in this world. We pray, Lord, for those leaders uh, to, to seek justice, to seek peace. We pray especially also, Lord, for our President Joe, for our Governor Phil, together with all legislatures and judges, Direct them by your word and spirit. Establish them in saving faith. Lead them in their office, offices to govern wisely for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, behold in mercy all for whom we pray. We pray especially for Shirley's family, for Ron. I pray for Tony and all that we name silently upon our hearts here in this moment. Bring healing, comfort, strength, patience, and certainty to all in need. Receive our thanks for your constant watch and merciful kindness. In every sorrow and every joy, do not let our eyes be drawn from the greater marvel of your kindness in Christ Jesus, by whose grace and forgiveness alone we receive every blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Lord, renew the gift of your Holy Spirit to all who commune this day. Work in us true contrition and lament to abandon our sins and so to come in confident faith to eat your son's body and drink his blood given and shed for our forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Lord, mighty God, you have shown us the face of your mercy in your son through whom all nations may find unity in life. Hear the prayers of your people. Grant what is needful to us and those for whom we pray that trusting in your mercy, our hearts may find perfect peace and rest. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns 
with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, it was on the night in which he was betrayed that he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after the supper, our Lord took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, drink, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. For those of you who are communing in place this morning, I invite you to take eat now the body of Christ given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. And take drink the blood of Jesus poured out, shed for you, given for the forgiveness of your sins. Now may this eating and drinking strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith into life everlasting. Amen.
proclaims the king is here, but Herod, why this senseless fear? For he who offers heavenly birth seeks not the kingdoms of this earth. The eastern sages saw from far and followed. Jordan's sacred flood, the heavenly lamb in meekness stood, that he of whom no sin was known might cleanse his people from their home. And oh, what miracle divine when water reddened into wine, he spoke dreams that nature never bestowed. For this is glad epiphany, all glory Jesus be to thee, whom with the Father we adore, and Holy Spirit We pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift of life. And we pray and implore you that you would strengthen us in faith, in fervent faith towards you, into life everlasting. Amen. Receive now the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
Hello, I scream, so I should, you should be able to hear me. Okay, there we go. Um, so uh, for those who may not know, my name is Rachel. I'm um, coming to you today for um, announcements from the board. Um, so I wanted to formally invite everybody. It is in your um, update in your email, but I wanted to put it out there. We are going to be having a celebration on the 28th after uh, service. That is pastor's last Sunday with us. It is also his birthday. I know that's not in there, but it is his birthday. I will not say how old he is because that's rude, but <laughs> it's a big one. So we do invite everybody to come out and celebrate with us, celebrate his birthday, celebrate his last Sunday and all the things that we've done over the last two, 10 years, two years, 10 years with him. Um, so we are inviting everybody out. The other update, which was in my email that is now gone, um, but just a quick update. We, the board did meet with the uh, President Jawecki yesterday and went over what the next steps are. We know everybody has a lot of questions. People have been asking, but we went over what the next steps are. The board is going to be taking the you know, the first portion that we have to do to get us prepared for this process. So just know that we are in you know, we're doing what we need to be doing. If you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask anybody on the board. We can, you know, help answer any questions that we have the answers to. Um, and just as a reminder, we, we do have Pastor Jeff. He is called here as our assistant pastor. He is going to be, um, he's currently helping Point Pleasant in, uh, Good Shepherd in Point Pleasant. And he will still be helping us as well. So we are going to be working out a schedule. We are taking care of everything. Just so if anybody did have questions, comments, concerns, you know, that's what we have for you right now, and please, you know, direct anything else to the board. Um, but So once again, next week on the, tw or not next week, two weeks on the 28th, please join us after service. Uh, and uh, if there's any other questions, please feel free to find us after service. Thank you. As a reminder, we have an offering plate in the back of the sanctuary for those who are present here today. You can also give online at gs4nj.org slash give. We are the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd. We are a caring community committed to Christ Jesus, and our vision is to connect ordinary people to our extraordinary God. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And all the people.